Hey, hello there, and welcome to How to YouTube, a tutorial series on all the tools I use on a daily basis to help you out on how to do YouTube, and how I do it all. Anyway, today is episode five, and it's all about filters and chroma keys. So this green screen behind me, for example, let's get rid of that. Um, there's a sort of a mini version of it built into this Streamlabs from earlier, which I believe I can still open, which is my curse. So as you can see, there's a small chroma key sort of style here, where you can see around the back of this guy. It's got a bit of green outline around him because the chroma key is not 100% perfect with that animation effect. Most of the time you won't notice it, but it's just because it's a really dark background. Anyway, we're going to look at filters today. So straight out of the bat, let's look at the start one. So this green here, the, the actual, uh, the overlay, the actual, um, where you, there, my streams, there, that one. We're going to put a filter in here. Play around with the filters. In fact, let's get rid of that one second. Let's move this further over. We have more screen space to play with. Filter, please. Thank you. So, filters. Anything you do, you can see live, which is great. These are your filters that are currently in effect. As you can see, there are none. This is the full picture that you can see. Obviously, only part of it is visible on screen here um, because of the size of it. Because you can see it cut off the bottom there and it's got the whole building there. Anyway, that is fine. So, Inside here, we've got this plus, we've got all these things we can do. We have the image mask and blend. Well, image mask and blend is all about basically causing different uh, well, blending effects, really. You can say, hey, I want to mask the alpha, uh, and here's a picture. So you actually point it at two different pictures, and they'll actually sort of try to overlay each other and then negative off of each other. So if you have two pictures that are like the inverse of each other, you can do that very, very well. I'm not quite sure how to, it applies, but there are ways of doing it. I can say, take me the Whenever you get this color screen on board, pick color also becomes an option. You can see the colors bounce around. And you can say, I want to remove that gray. Boom. Like that. And then make it do stuff based on that because of the opacity. So you can, you can, stuff, you can stretch images and all sorts of things. Image mask blend is, I think it's more of a useful tool in rare circumstances. Anyway, crop and pad. Well, that's blatantly obvious what crop and pad is. That's literally about cropping. So I can say, there's the left. I would like to take off 200 pixels from the left, or even, well, it's a big picture, 2,000 pixels off the left. Look at that. It's cropped it down, chopped it down the side edge there. I think it's a big picture. It's cut it down. Oh, I want to take off 1,500 from the top. There we go. We've cropped it right down to that now. It's a lot smaller picture. Zero makes it really wide, and then zero makes it really tall again. So it is literally crop and pads. The padding is when you put negative numbers in. Mm -hmm. Negative. Oops. There we go. So now it's got this massive border on across the top because it's got nothing there, but we've padded it by 1200 pixels. So cropping is taking them off the image, padding, adding stuff to the image. It's great for pushing it around. Quite frankly, if you're going to add padding, you might as well just move the, the actual source where you want it to go. Not quite sure why you want to do it that way. But cropping, definitely good. If you've got a picture or if you've got like the camera, see where the camera is right here. If you had the camera across here and there was something in the bottom you just didn't like, but you didn't want but it gives where the camera positioned, you can just cut it off. Or if you've got the camera there and the camera's got a nice widescreen picture, but you just want it to sort of stop sort of here, you can just crop off hang on a minute, there we go. You want to stop it there, you can crop off the edge in the actual video stream. I'll show you that when we get to the camera. I'm doing that on last purposely. I get rid of the crop. Boom. Uh, you know what, let's do the camera now, because you can see me go all funny colours, can't you? Filters. Hello. So I put it over here. The filters has two, because it's a camera has actually audio, there's audio filters in there, you can say, I like gain filters. Um, it's not really gonna help so much because I'm not using the camera's microphone, but uh, that will basically let you gain control. It's just it's like sound, it's how much background noise and amplifications and stuff. You've got video delay, so you can off sync the actual video. So if your camera's running in milliseconds behind or ahead of the microphone you're using, you can use that delay to sort of fix it. Noise suppression and noise gates, very useful for if you've got microphones with hissing sounds. Again, I'm not going to use any of those ever because the microphone and camera, very different devices when you're doing recordings like this. Then we get to the important ones. We've done the mask blend, crop pad. We did a little bit that. Let me just show you how that works. So if I said I want to take off 200 pixels from that side, it makes my camera bigger. And then we go bigger and bigger and bigger. But if you look at the camera over, over here, as I'm taking edges off, the camera's moving in because I'm, I'm eating at the left hand side. You see, if I were to eat from the right hand side, 200 pixels, and they would eat, actually sort of eat into me rather than moving me across. And uh, it just, it's a way to remove parts of me. So if you say, oh, I want to make this myself as small as possible without actually making me smaller, I could bring that in, 
few hundred pixels. Dun, 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 dun. There we go. 110. Top will say another 100. Yep. Left will say 200. Hmm, maybe 250. Okay. Make sure you delete the other number as well. There you go. I've made me a lot smaller. I've got as much smaller box to work inside of. But I also have a lot less space on screen. So there you go. I'm going to put that back on because we don't need it. Cropping and padding. Very, very useful thing to have. Let's remove that one. Next one. Color correction. If you find you've got a picture you want to use and the picture is a little bit offset or if you're using the camera and the camera's sort of really red, you can come in here and say, actually, I want to take the red. Boom. And have a red overlay. Ooh. So you can make it red and you can contrast it down and contrast it up. You can play around with the brightness, the gamma, and how much of an effect you have. You want to make it transparent. Let's give it that color because quite frankly, that red is a kind of a nine. There we go. But if you look at that, that's 50% opacity. I just look a ghost here, but look over there. You can see the game behind me. <gasps> yes. So you can play around with that. You can have transparency effects around so far. Things can make, but that's useful for um, if you're doing chat, if you have on screen chat. You can make it like 50% or 70% or something like that. So you, people can see the chat and see through the chat as well, making it useful. Um, that's all done in color correction. It's very useful. So if you want to say, this person's a bit blue, I'll add a bit of green and then we'll sort of make that maybe 10% green on top of maybe another image that's there. So you can say color correction again, a second color correction. There you go, call it zero. <laughs> and this one will say add white. And um, we'll set this one to, to a 30%. So you can actually stack them as well. Anyway, that's the color correction. Let's remove those so I can come back to being normal. Boop. Ah, as close to normal as they can get. <laughs> scaling and aspect ratios. Ooh, these are fun. What type of scaling do you want to use? As by cubic, by linear, point, and Lacanzos. Whichever one, it varies depending on what you're doing, which one you want to use, and then resolution. Now, we're running the camera, which I believe is 16 by 9 so if he said I want to do it 4x3, it stretches the image to 4x3. I'm now a lot taller and a lot thinner than I am normally. 16x10 and 16x9, so you can see it actually stretches the image rather than uh, just rather, rather than cropping it. Useful if you want to stretch it, I can also say make me 1080p. This is now much bigger over here. I can actually say, actually, can you make it 640, make it nice and small? So it's all about rescaling an individual image to, an, to a new size. Um, you can also type in custom sizes, so 300 by 500. You can type your own custom resolutions in there. That's useful if you want an exact size compared to just dragging these anchors around and trying to get about an accurate size. Uh, next one is color key. That's wrong. Next one is scroll, which we won't do scroll. Ah. We won't do scroll just yet. We'll, do, we'll save scroll. Scroll's better for text. Color key. In color key, you set a color. Funnily enough, I'm using custom because you've got all these different ones here. I prefer custom. And we say, sorry, pick a color. Let's pick the black of my shirt. Boom. <gasps> it's gone. Look at me over here. I'm invisible. So color key and chroma key are very, very similar in the way they work. But if we do this again, do it properly though. Uh, pick that green there. Boom. You see how the background sort of half faded away? That's basically what chroma key. And you've got down here, a chroma key, which we'll do that properly in chroma key in there, but you get the idea of what it's doing. It's making a color disappear, and you get all the filtering options. Well, that's what it does. It lets you remove a color or try and get around to filtering them out. All right, let's get rid of that one. But what chroma key is, is slightly different, so we'll use chroma key for its actual job. Sharpen image. That's exactly what it says. Look at my camera. If I, if I drag that to the far sharpen, look at that. The graininess of the edge. Look at the. Ooh. Look at the edge of the fingers, they are really like weirdly edged. That's because they've been super sharpened by the uh, scaling agent. Take it to, blur to smooth and everything's really blurry. Maybe not so much in the camera, but you get the idea that sharp is not always better, but sometimes it's good to bring detail out. Sometimes you want to blur some stuff, so you use the sharpen. Anything less than one, 0 0.1 is blur. Anything written than 0 0.1 is sharpen. So uh, very useful for tweaking certain image types and then Finally, the chroma key, the one, the holy grail of making things invisible. Look how straight off the bat, <clears throat> it's done a damn good job of already getting it. The background behind me over here on the main grain, look at that, it's already done a good job. And that's just saying green, find green and remove it. It's done a pretty good job, you've got to admit. It's not perfect, there's a lot of whisks around it. And it's, 
I personally still prefer doing custom. Uh, turn the chroma key, here's a little hint, turn the chroma key off there, do select color, pick the color and find the color around the mid tones. You've got these really dark ones down here, you've got the real light ones up here. That's just where my, my lights up. Find a mid tone green about there. Okay, there's your color, chroma key back on again. Everything disappears by default because this, this, the similarity is set so high. Drag this down. Slowly you will fade back in and eventually slowly the background will come back in as well. Drag that to a sweet point where you've got the background goes away, but there's a little bit of green around the side of your head. Right? Drag it down even more, it goes away, but you just have to blend away. So it's kind of a, a trade-off with that where's that safe spot? You want to make sure it's about whether the background's not doing that, but also you're not doing that. Look at the chair. And me. So you want to find that, that sort of that sweet spot between the two. If you can't find that sweet spot, turn off the chroma key, get a new colour. It could just be that you need a darker colour or a lighter colour, usually, usually darker, but depends on the lighting around you. Boom, there's the chrome key, shrink it down, and that's much better for me. The chair's behaving itself, I'm behaving myself, I put my hands up. There's always that little greenly shake, that's just because the resolution of the cameras and the refresh rates, they can't keep up with everything. But that's the chrome key, it's very, very simple. You've got smoothness, um, the more smooth you make it, the you get them pixels, see that little pixel edge around the edge that tries to smooth out the image in any way it can. Turn it right down, you get these sparkles up here. So you want to make that so the sparkles go away, but not so you start to fade as well. Uh, colour spill reduction basically means make it black and white, make it full saturation. Um, it's it's what stops that green coming through. If you look at it, so it tries to remove the green, but it also takes out other colours in the process. Again, you've got your contrast and your brightness and stuff in case you want to tweak your actual, oh, I'm too dark in here, so I'm going to bring me up like that. So that's default for my camera with the lighting. I make myself brighter. Risk is making yourself brighter does also cause some minor issues with making any anomalies brighter as well. There we go. So actually chroma keys. That's the one that most people actually really cared about. But remember, this is the start screen. We probably want our start screen to be nice and big like that. And we see the, the chair is, is fading in and out. That's the only little problem you have to worry about. I find you have to sort of tweak the, the chroma key every time you use it just to play safe with that bit. Turn that to there. There we go. No sparklies? Yeah, we're all right. So there, that's us. That's me. Hi. On the main screen, I'm in the corner over here with the game still running from earlier. I'm going to move down to like that big. Um, on the end screen, we're not there at all because I want to go and run away and do stuff. So it's like, hey, guys, welcome. The stream's starting soon. It's going to be great. You know, and then it's like, boom, RimWorld. So you've got to be on watch out for all the scenes are, are, are great. You, it's not a game you. Now you remember I said that scrolling text is uh, something I want to show you later on. Well, we'll do that now. That stream is starting soon up top there. Let's do it with that one. So that stream is starting soon. Filter. Hi stream starting soon. How are you doing? And then we'll go scroll, scroll. Scrolling is very, very, very simple. Horizontal speed, vertical speed. Horizontal, vertical speed means it scrolls like that. Simple enough. And horizontal speed means it scores like that. You can do it fast. Not quite sure why you want to go that fast. You can go backwards. Or you can just have it scrolling like that. Stream starting soon. Bear in mind, word wrap on the soon and stream. Yeah. You got limit width. And you got limit height. So you can say, I want to actually it to scroll, but I want it to scroll for 1000 pixels. And that actually potentially means, actually, this is a big monitor. Uh, 1920. There we go. So that actually means, like that, it's a nice long run. Okay, it's, it's a big setup. But you see, uh, the problem is with that setup, I've chosen 1920 to get maximum stream, but if it's stream setting soon, and stream and stream, so you get the word two or three times potentially. It varies when you also use the, uh, the smaller fonts and stuff. Turn that limit width back off and put that back over where it's supposed to be. There you go. Stream is starting soon. Stream is starting soon. Stream is starting soon. It will just do that continuously. That's great for like donations and stuff. You have little donation tickers across the bottom saying this person donates some money. And now it looks at a file on the hard drive and reads it out. Very, very useful. Very good way of doing it. Um, unfortunately, here there's no way of saying, hey, can you stop that there? You would literally have to go into edit the scene. Hi again. At the end of the file, give it some spaces. And now you've got stream starting soon. Gap, 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 stream starting soon. 
and it's as simple as that. It works very, very simply. Small text down here saying, you know, donations and news and stuff. All good stuff. You've been the stream starting soon behind me. It's like, hey, the stream is starting soon. <laughs> but there you go. So that is your uh, stream starting soon sort of message. Uh, we'll get rid of that rotation because that rotation will just annoy me nonetheless. Do. There we go. Back to stream starting soon. It's got that long bit on the end because I, had, I did have to hit like 50 enters on the end of it. Did I have to hit like 50 enters on the end of it? Thank you. And soon. Boom. Stream starting soon. So that's that's scenes and filters. So this scenes last time, filters this time. Filters are amazing. They make everything work kind of the way it does. Of course, the benefit being the guy. <laughs> okay. So the final thing, chroma key. When it comes to chroma keying like, like this, with, with that background especially, lighting is very, very important. I have two lamps. Box standard, cheap, floor standing lamps. And if I turn them off, one off, two off, and I have a forward light there. I look like a beetroot because there's so much red coming from other things. Um, but you can see the green screen. The green screen is not lit enough to be filtered. If I turn one of the lamps back on again, that half of the room is fine. And just for your reference, literally normal, normal lamps. Nothing special about them. Just placing them, turn them on, and then tweak them so they point to the right places. And don't if they hit you, by the way, you'll saturate like hell. So, point there you go. Very very simple. The normal house lights, there's nothing special about them. I put LED bulbs in them because LEDs have a a whiter white than uh, than incandescent bulbs can possibly have. Um, and I like to put also they don't produce heat because you know normal green screen lights produce a lot of heat. LEDs don't, so I don't have heat. But there we go. That's green screens and chroma keys and all the filters that OBS has. I think it's a great tool. I like it. I use it a lot for my normal stuff. By the way, you might notice down here, by the way, we have a new audio source for the camera. Um, like I said before, I don't use the audio source for the camera. Just mute it. But there you go. That is, uh, that's the filters. I hope you enjoyed. If there's any more information you'd like to know about filters or other areas of the series, please let me know. But until next time, comments in the comments. Thanks for watching. And see you next time. And yes, I do that every single time with my hands and everything.